It is another episode of Giants Talk here on MSG Networks. I am Christian Dyer, and in a few moments, we're going to be talking with Justin Tuck, getting him on the phone line, and well, trying to break down all the things that have been going on the, the past week or so here. A busy time in the sports world. You got the Rangers in the playoffs, and Justin, such a big, big New York Rangers fan. I don't, I don't know if people know and understand how much he really follows this team. It's not just a passive thing. He, he follows the team. He, he understands who's in the minor league system, who's coming up, their draft picks, what they're trying to do. And, you know, I know that he's a guy who still is probably recovering from that game six loss tougher perhaps as a fan than as a player going through something like that. So yeah, we're going to talk some Rangers. We're going to talk some game six with, with one of the biggest Rangers fans out there, Justin Tuck. Also, when we get him on the line, want to ask him about Giants minicamp. Rookie minicamp is here, and it's it's an exciting time, certainly, when you think about the pieces the Giants added, in particular in the first round, getting that tight end, uh, what that does for the offense. But defensively, I like one of the guys that they brought in there, Avery Moss, on the uh, defensive end. And I think Justin's going to have a really unique perspective on what this player can bring to the table and perhaps be able to share a couple of his own uh, thoughts and insights and, and remembrances if he can remember back that far to his own rookie minicamp. So it's going to be Giants Talk with Justin Tuck. All right, well, it's certainly a busy time of the sports year. And, uh, you know, Justin, I, I know, huge Rangers fan. You've become a Rangers fan now for a couple for a couple seasons. And, I mean, this week, game six, that was a tough one. Were you there at the game? I was. And first off, you're shortchanging me by a few years. I became a Rangers fan in 2006, so a little bit more than a couple. I don't want to sound like the guy that just, just jumped on the bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> but I was there, and Game Six was uh, it was tough. Obviously, you know I thought they had a really good shot of taking it back to Ottawa for Game Seven. Um, they had played really, really well the previous two games in in MSG, and you know it just didn't work out. I thought I thought they they put forth a great great effort, but it, it wasn't at night. I mean, I, w- I was watching in my living room, and my wife, who's never watched hockey before, outside of watching the Mighty Ducks and Emilio Estevez. Uh, was getting into it, and she's gripping my arm and everything. You were there at the game. That that looked like an electric atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, I mean, every night that I went, um, had the opportunity to go up to Ottawa for Game Five as well. But uh, every night I went uh, to MSG was, you know, the crowd was definitely in it. I thought that the 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 guys really felt off, um, you know, the energy in that building. And again, like I said, Game Six, I I had no. Um, intuition as far as anything being different. I thought, um, you know, the crowd was in it. I thought the guys played fast, played, you know, you know, played well, just wasn't able to kind of, you know, put, a, put some shots in different places. And, and Ottawa's goalie, Anderson, played really, really well that night. So, like I said, it was just one that night that night. Um, really, really proud of the season they had and, and looking forward to next year. I must have missed the email inviting me to the game. I mean, I'm, I might have typed it in wrong. Um uh, is it Gmail? Or I, I might have put it in Yahoo instead of Gmail. That's my fault. I, well, that, that's what makes it even worse. I have a Yahoo account, which is <laughs> which makes it completely inexcusable. Oh, you're, you're dating yourself. Maybe you let out. Maybe you left out my middle initial. Maybe that was it. Something there. I might have put a you know a, a period where it shouldn't have been or something like that. I'm not that good uh, at typing it. Techno- technology, technology, killing my playoff mojo. Now, I, I understand Damon Snacks Harrison, the Giants' nose tackle, he's become a huge Rangers fan now, and he claims that, that the Rangers are undefeated when he's at the game. Muhammad well, Wilkerson... I was my footsteps for some reason. You know, I, I kind of you know, got in the, at, the, at the... You were the trailblazer. Floor, now everybody wants to kind of jump on the... No, I'm joking. Snacks a great guy. <laughs> Snacks is. He's a huge Rangers fan now. Um, Muhammad Wilkerson from the Jets, he's been on the Rangers bandwagon now for a couple years. I mean, he doesn't go back as far as you. 2006, I stand corrected. Uh, but, you know, he, he's, he's going back. So what is it about defensive linemen that you think draws? What's the appeal for, for the NHL Rangers hockey with you guys? Because that, that's Wilkerson, that's Harrison, that's you. I think there might be a couple others in the mix. Well, i I tell you what it is. You know, I look at and hockey players are some of the more athletic uh, 
athletes there is. You know, you're skating on ice, you're going really fast, you're getting bumped all over the place, and you're still making these athletic, uh, incredible plays. Uh, and that's pretty similar to the defense alignment. You know, we're the best athletes on the field. Not only are we bigger than most, we're also the, the most athletic, you know, pound for pound the fastest, pound for pound the strongest, pound for pound the best athletes. So that's the kind of, you know, uh, the correlation between the two. And that's probably the reason why we kind of flock to uh, watching these hockey games because we see a lot of, um, you know, what we have inside of us being on display on the ice every night. And so you're in the building a couple days ago and, you know, the playoff buzz and everything else. Does it feel like an NFL playoff game? You played in a bunch of those games. Uh, did it, does it have that feel? Does it have that same sort of intensity, that same sort of electricity going around MSG as when you're stepping on to a football game and you know it's playoffs one and done? I think so. I think is he, is for me as a fan of hockey, uh, it's probably worse for me uh, because when you're in it, you're playing in it, you might not – you know, you don't get as as involved from the the fandom side. You know, you, it's it's more more. This is my job. These are this is the the things that I need to do to be successful. So you're more focused on that. You're more focused. Like, you know, when I put my hand in the ground at you know MetLife Stadium to play, um, you know, a playoff game. Once I once that ball snapped, I don't hit a crowd. I don't. I don't. It, it's just you know, it kind of blacks out, and then get back in the huddle, you hear it again. When you when you're a fan and you're in the in the crowd as a fan, it it it, it feels electric, you know, the whole time. It's, it's no pauses in it, so uh, it's just different. I definitely felt like it was a playoff atmosphere, uh, and like again, I, I thought, you know, Madison Square Garden was, you know, electric. Well, it, it may be May, and it may still be playoff hockey time. And unfortunately for our Rangers, it's not playoff hockey time anymore. But uh, you know, it's Giants rookie mini camp. You remember your first rookie mini camp and being there and what that experience was like? <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, you were a young pup. Yeah, I was 21 when I got drafted to, by the Giants, and just coming, you know, uh, coming from South Bend, Indiana, and now I'm, I'm practicing right out front. Looking at the the New York skyline, it was a completely different, um, you know, vision for me. But yeah, I remember being mad. I remember looking at every defensive lineman that was drafted before me and just being really, really upset. And I, and it's funny because one of our coaches there was like, "You're gonna probably use that to fuel you throughout your entire career," and I did. So that's that was my, that's the the thing that normally comes up for me when I think about really mini, rookie minicamp. It's either. You know, no matter where you are, if you if you went if you wasn't taken like number one overall, everybody else is upset with where they were drafted at. So, you know, you gotta find um, the little things like that, little nuggets like that to kind of drive you to make you go out there and, and really work your butt off to become the best player you, you can be. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of those synergies are going on right now, uh, not only in Giants camp, but you know, the other 31 teams around this. This, this league, man, there's it's some guys out there that's going to go out there and, and know that this is their opportunity to make that first impression to coaches, to, to ownership, to management, and uh, hopefully fuel the rest of their careers. What was your welcome to the league sort of moment that you had? Was it in the Giants locker room? You know, was it something on the field? Did it not take place till training camp? What was the moment when you said, oh, wow, you know, I, I'm in the NFL now? Well, it, it, I think it happened pretty early for me. I think, you know, in rookie mini camp, it's all rookies in, like, first and second years. And in rookie mini camp, I was the man. I mean, everybody was like, oh, you know, Justin, come in. You're, You're still the man, man, Justin. Well, I had to, I, I started off really, really high, and it took a valley, and then it came back up. But, you know, at, 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 at rookie mini camp, you know, I was kind of the, the guy. And that, that soon ended because, you know, two weeks later, this guy named Michael Strahan showed up for practice, and then it was like, sit down, sit down and watch. <laughs> and it was, it was, it was, uh, it was that moment when I realized, you know, what, this isn't South Bend, this isn't college anymore. These guys are really, really good at what they do, and especially, you know, Michael Strahan and, and I, you know, OC was on the other side, and getting getting the opportunity to kind of just sit back and 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 watch those guys go to work. It really, um, you know, it was, I was able to pick up a lot of stuff. So. Went from being the man to being nobody really, really quick, but obviously worked my way back up to, to, to being a man again, I guess. So uh, that was definitely my introduction to, you know, this is the NFL and you gotta you got to work your way back up.
Yeah, and you look at the Giants right now. You got Olivier Vernon on one side. You, you got Jason Pierre-Paul on the other side. The Giants took a guy in day three who I really like from a small school, Avery Moss. He, you know, he's long, he's athletic, he's got a great engine, good lateral quickness. What would be your advice to a guy, you know, coming from a smaller program, now st- having to step up this weekend, day three selection? He's probably got a chip on his shoulder, too. Well, he better be good. They they gave him my number. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I agree. I agree. I think what you just said was a great scouting report of the type of player he is. I've got an opportunity to look at him a little bit. Uh, rangy, athletic, um, has a great motor, great energy on the football field. You know, he's. I think he he fits well with this defense because Spags. You know, he has a a knack for kind of fitting people into you know little roles, little uh, you know. Um, positions that uh, only they can fit into. I know when I was there, you know, like you said, I had straight hand, I had OC. Well, then they, they, they put me and started this NASCAR package and, and utilized my ability to go inside and things like that. So I could see Moss kind of fitting in some, some, some situations like that um, where he will be able to kind of utilize his athletic ability to, um, you know, create mismatch problems. And that's that's something that you can't you can't coach. It's God given, and he seems to have it. Obviously, it's a huge learning curve, but you know, I'm excited to see how he grows. Does he remind you of anyone? You said you've watched him a little bit. Do you see him on tape, and does he kind of stick out in a certain way, and maybe make you reminisce about someone you played with? I mean, not yet. I, I you know, I haven't. I would hate to go and, and kind of peg him early and already because I haven't watched enough on him to see. I've seen the highlights. I've seen um, mostly him of him making plays, not not necessarily a full game of him, the highs and lows of his game yet. Uh, so I'll, I'll reserve from you know putting him in a category compared to somebody else. Well, you're going through a new experience now. I mean, rookie mini camp was many, many, many years ago. Uh, not too many, but many. Uh, you're 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 now going for your MBA at the Wharton School of Business, which is you know for those who don't know a prestigious program. Uh, what what made you want to go on and get the MBA now that the playing career is done and you've moved into that next chapter of life? Well, like you said, it's the next chapter. Man. I'm, I'm I'm 33 years old and um, was was 33 years old when I decided to make this decision. And um, you know I did really well uh, up until to now, and but. I got a lot of life to live, so um, I knew I wanted to do something else. I didn't want to be the guy that, you know, um, kind of just sit back on my laurels and, and, you know, my kids will not remember that, you know, I worked my butt off to be the football player I was. They'll remember a dad that was at the house watching TV every day they came back from school and things like that. I didn't want that. I wanted to go out and, and kind of reinvent myself. And, and, you know, it's funny, you use the, the phrase next chapter. That's something, that's something that I've... I've told myself and continue to tell myself this is this is the next chapter. And as hard as I work to become, you know, a great football player, I plan on putting the same energy in becoming uh, or, or or becoming a, a great, you know, whatever's next. Um, there's a lot of opportunity in this world to, to do things that you love to do, that you're passionate to do, and I'm trying to trying to find out what's the next passion. Now, I mean, what I don't think people understand about former players is, you know, and I'm friends with Bart Scott, and and Bart's out there, you know, he's doing TV, he's doing radio, he's doing all this sort of stuff, uh, you know, away from the field, but he's out there making investments, opening up businesses, doing things like that, and there's such a stereotype, I think, that, you know, when a player's career is done, you guys just sit on the sofa and watch NFL Network or MSG when the Rangers are on, uh, you know, 24-7. Do you have any sort of role models that you kind of saw who, when their playing days were done, stepped into this next chapter in the business world or with charities or whatever, that you're kind of looking to them for some guidance or maybe sought them out for some insight? You know, I mean, I got plenty. Obviously, going to University of Notre Dame, guys like um... – you know, Joe Montana coming to mix. Um, I've I've dealt with and have have a great relationship with David Robinson, Ronnie Lott, obviously Michael Strahan and what he's doing now. Um, the, I mean Steve Young, all these guys that have kind of taken themselves and, and reinvented themselves from you know what they they're known for from their playing their playing days to these um, in a lot of cases like a financial guru or media guru or you know a philanthropy guru. Uh, these guys have been tremendously helpful for me and, and and the insight they've been able to give me as far as you know the the, 
the timeline, the, the, how to carve this this into um, our already busy schedules. Um, you know, it's been important, and obviously, I wouldn't I wouldn't be this far along without um, you know those type of mentors in my life. And I believe you recently started an internship. Now, I mean, I can't imagine you pushing around a cart around the office or bringing coffee to your boss or something like that. What are you doing? Uh, right now, I'm actually working with Admiral Capital, um, you know, a PE shop that um, focuses mostly on real estate. Um, but this is David Robinson's um, PE firm. Uh, so obviously, like I said earlier, he's been a huge mentor to me. He, he asked me if I would be interested in coming in and learning and basically just learning the business. Um and then from here I'll I'll leave here um uh, the first first weekend the first week in June and I'm going over to Goldman um for the rest of the summer. So two internships for me this summer and just trying to get a little bit more exposure around um you know what's out there. What what exactly um are my options and and looking at as much stuff as I can to see you know what do I want to do for the rest of my life. Now, I interned in college at my town's police department. What year was that? Back in the sixties. Oh man, that they were was. I'll, I'll happen to let you know. I'm a child of the nineties, at least at least my high school years. <laughs> but no, I've, I've okay. I worked in I worked in the town police department. I've handled a samurai sword, so that that, that was an eye opening experience. That you you know you walk out of there and, oh boy, that, that those were some headaches I had from that internship. So you basically knew then that you did not want to go into that that field of work. Uh, you know, it was fascinating. It was great, um, but I, I like writing and and I like uh, when people make fun of my age on podcasts. So that so you know, the, right now I'm kind of regretting not being back in that evidence room after you know the, the ageism jokes. I'm two years older than you, Justin. I want you to know that. Well, I played football, so I'm probably about sixteen, seventeen years older than you if you if you count it like dog years. <laughs> so, so you're going to be going off to Goldman Sachs, and and then any other plans for for summer? Or are you going to be on summer vacay? Yeah, I mean after the after the internship at, at Goldman, um, I'll take a few weeks to kind of um, you know um, spend some time with you know the family, the wife, and the boys, and uh, and then head back to to Warden to get uh, to, you know finish up the second year uh, down there. So busy summer, but you know at the back end of it, um, get a little time to. You kind of reconnect and and and, and uh, you know spend some time with my family and then go back into the grind of uh, trying to trying to trying to get my MBA finished up. Well, Justin, always great, always a pleasure, and uh, I will be emailing you my birth certificate so that you then have my email address for the next time the Rangers are in the playoffs, which will be next year. There you go. All right, Justin, appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, pleasure. See you next time. Take care. Well, that was a lot of fun. It's always great to hear Justin's thoughts on on the NFL and the New York Giants and the draft. But if you'll excuse me, I'm going to be checking into the hospital just a couple miles away. I think I'm going to have to go to the burn unit with some of those age jokes that he had. Wow. Some tough stuff there from Justin. But, you know, all kidding aside, always great, always great to hear from him. I I love some of the thoughts that he had on rookie minicamp, you know. Justin was an early round pick when he was taken, I think it was the 2003 NFL draft. He comes into rookie minicamp and, you know, he's uh, he's kind of the man. He, he was the guy. He was uh, one of the standout players. He was going against other players his level. And then a few weeks later, he walks into to minicamp and, and he's got a Michael Strahan out there. And all of a sudden, he's knocked down a peg or two. And, uh Rookies always look good. There's always a couple that emerge from a mini camp. There's a lot of hype about them uh, because of the way they perform. But then when they come in to play against the big boys, the veterans, the established guys, uh, you get to really see what these players are made of. So uh, some really good, really interesting perspective that only a Justin Tuck can provide. What an what an exciting episode of Giants Talk here on MSG Networks. We look forward to the next time. 